Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Now you may remember, Wes, I'm just trying to remember myself whether it was November or October, I had a, a young lady who came on and said um, that uh, effectively we'd all paid for our electricity so why not swap out your old meters that you're being charged for and bung in a good nice brand new one or a second hand one off eBay and life will be fine, you won't have any bills. And fascinating interview as it was it did get a little bit of pushback on that and I thought it would be interesting to just ask some of the questions that I was told I hadn't been a good enough interviewer and ask so I thought I would do that this is of course the lovely Kales from Free Energy Nationwide hello Kales welcome back hello, to the Richard. show nice to see you again thanks for having uh, me on for part that's two. That's, yeah, for part two. Now, as um, we were talking just before we started recording this, yeah. and I said I might have to ask you some of these questions, I try on my interviews to be as fair as possible, um, and I'm not working for the BBC. I don't ask forensic questions, and it's not for me to sort of say, oh, why didn't you say this, and why haven't you said that, and is that true, and is that... Because the way my platform works is I really allow the guests to put their information forward and I assume, maybe it's the wrong assumption, but I assume that the audience is intelligent enough to do their own due diligence to work out whether they're being uh, scammed, lied to, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, whatever. I mean, I'm just here to facilitate really interesting ideas and concepts. Mm -hmm. And when you came on, it was a, a fascinating conversation, but a few people did have their, their uh, feathers ruffled but yeah. at the same time, some good people thought that what you were doing was great. So let's start with the good stuff, shall we? H how was the response when um, you were on last time? It, it was it was um, phenomenal. It, we had a massive influx of newbies that joined the Telegram group, which was brilliant because the more, like I've always said this on many interviews that I've done over the last two years, specifically about energy, um, you've got to do your own due diligence and. There's always a choice. So you don't have to listen to me. You need to, I, I would, you know, have a little listen, but then do your own due diligence, do your own research. And you can use the Telegram group to do that research. And then there's various different points that it will, you know, take you down depending on your own circumstances. I don't claim to be a genius, Richard. I'm just sharing my experiences. I'm not telling you, you need to have your meters replaced. I'm showing you some doors. You're you're the one that needs to pick which door you want to go through if you're ready for that stage yet. Because a lot of people in the last three to four years have gone down different routes. Um, it's not always unicorns and smiley faces. It may take you down a different direction. I know you've had some experiences as well in the last few months, which you've had first-hand experience, not listening to somebody else or your next door neighbor what's happened to them you've had your own experiences which for one it's shown you the corruption firsthand and then it's actually put you in a position where you've needed to think right what am i going to do now which option am i going to choose am i going to stay as a slave in the system or am i going to step out and choose an alternative and see which direction it takes me um and, and this is what this is about it's not just about energy it's about going through the doors and it's hard for some people, once their eyes are open, to then take a step back. It's whether you're ready for it, I think, because a lot of people go down this route. They've not they've not done enough research. They find they may have a bailiff at the door, an enforcement agent, somebody waving a warrant of entry. But then th there's, there's so many different aspects of that. Um, if you do have somebody with a warrant of entry knocking at the door, um, well, what are these warrants that they're using? Who's responsible for the warrants? Who signed the warrants off? Are they valid? Are they valid? Uh, so like, there's so many, so much that people need to understand before they go down this route to be prepared, not to put you back into a place of fear, but for you to have enough um, information to be able to deal with a situation if that situation arises. The majority of the time, you wouldn't have that type of hassle. I always believe if the universe is giving you this lesson or this experience, it's for a reason. And a lot of the times, it, it'll help you on your sovereignty path. And I mean, that's where we're taking our group. We changed it, not changed it as such, but we want to move it into a different direction. 
because it's all last two years it's been about ah rah 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 the government's this uh, we are fighting the government no we're not we are choosing to step out of the system we're not fighting fighting is a, a low frequency we're going to stand our ground but we're not fighting we're not using violence um we're not doing it we're not involved in any criminal activities as, as some people have been suggesting and that's totally different i mean it would be stupid to do that and um, that's why the group in essence is about replacing meters because that's not a crime and um, there's no crime to replace a meter by a qualified engineer and um, so it, it's almost stepping out of the system and choosing a different direction as such um, but we want to take the the group into that next level to ascend further to find to, to help everybody and assist people in finding their spiritual sovereignty because that's when the peace the enlightenment hits and that's where we all want to be the enlightenment stage but we've got to go through the stages to be able to get there you can't just skip to that but we're, so we're taking the start of the community call every thursday where people can just join live we have different guests on there to talk about all these different aspects of well, how do you ascend what how do you do that how can you step out of your sovereignty it's not just about the fight and fly that's going to keep you going round and round in circles and we're, we're not we're not operating in that anymore we've you know we've, we've done a lot of inner work and it is about doing that inner work which is is about doing your own research doing your own due diligence stepping out of that fear that low frequency um that's where we're taking the group certainly um does that answer Brilliant. your question yeah well I, I i guess so yes um a, a big update really on yeah on the, on how the the reaction was and what you're doing and where you're going which sounds really good so let me just um go back then and and i mean there was a lot of interest and a lot of people got in touch and they were fascinated yeah and and most people took it you know to be honest and be fair uh, most people took it in the vein that the the video was meant to be a, 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 an introduction to an idea that some people had not thought of before that you could even change your meter and that it was okay to do so, etc. And some people, of course, pushed back on that. One of the comments that I was told I had not pushed uh, you on, and as I reiterate now, that I'm not here to sort of push forensically on anything. But one of the things was um, you made the statement that um, we'd already paid for the electricity. Yes. Now, there is um, a fairly well-known YouTuber, I won't uh, give out his name, people can go and find him, who did a, a little uh, video reaction on that to say that what you had said from his professional opinion as a, um, a barrister, let's yeah. say that, um, that that was technically incorrect, that electricity had not been paid for. So let me throw that back at you yeah. to see what your response might be. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... Which angle are you coming at? That's where you need to decide. I mean, I, I choose to be, um, like I've suggested before, I, I've stepped out of the system. So I'm not acting in commerce. I don't use my legal fiction, right? I'm a sovereign being, a light being, which means I'm not bound by a deemed contract as such. So for me to contract with somebody, I have to wait in the signature because I'm a man, a living woman. That's where I reside in the common law. So it depends which angle you're coming from. Well, I suppose, he, I mean, his, his argument would be, it's, he calls it law, but we call it legal, um, um, what do you call it? Legal stature and acts and statutes and legislation. Yeah. Um, but he, he, so he kind of crosses both those yeah. two different things calling, which, of course, I would imagine that you and I completely understand there's an absolute separation between what's yeah. legal and what's not. Like you say, you've got to separate because you can't, it, it gets confusing, really. And again, mm. this is why we have different approaches with this on the group to take. So it's not, there's not one document on the group that explains it all because no. it's too overcomplicated. It's too um I guess with this, the deceit is very, very deep rooted. So if you wanted to go down this process and you preferred a formal written process, which the black belt barrister would be uh, preferred of, of that process. But well, somebody again, of that name, you know, who, whoever it might be. Whoever it might be. You I'm not to suggesting. You decision at the, at, the, at the front of that, whether, well, actually, yeah, I prefer doing a written process. I have that particular skill set, so I'm going to, 
I'm going to put the so-called supplier on notice and I'm going to ask them for evidence. If they're claiming something in law, they have to provide full disclosure. So full disclosure, what would that include? Um, my questions, what I would ask them would be, can you provide me evidence that you supply this property electric and gas would be one of the one of the questions. The other question would be, can you provide me evidence that I am in a contract um, with you? Right. Another question would be, can you provide me evidence that you own the meter that's in this property that you are claiming, you know, that you are claiming and you are charging me for? Those are types of questions that you would ask them in a formal written process. And you're not going to get the answers that you want because they don't want to incriminate themselves. They are no. claiming that they supply. You know, I don't even know if I'm allowed to mention the big, we all know who the top three so-called suppliers are in the UK, um, which have earned billions, by the way. In the last couple of years, I did a few figures and, and they were in the billions of profit that they've earned in the last couple of years. The profit is, is quadrupled and it's some, you know, you need to have a little look at that as well. How can energy's not changed? Electric and gas has not changed in any way. We're not consuming any more. So why are they earning quadruple the amount that they did two, three years ago? There's just so much corruption. Well, there's certainly a disparity there between um, the profits and what the customers get in exchange. You know, if they've got so much profit, why can't they lower lower the prices? But the, I guess the point you're saying is that if they if the supplier, so called, is not actually supplying, they're just they are acting as billers. Metering. Then... They are metering and billing services, but they are right. acting as suppliers that's what they're telling you so if you um, were buying a car uh and sorry if you had a car and you wanted to insure sure the car you yeah. could go direct to an insurance company yeah or you could use a broker who will go around and try and find you the cheaper tariff but if you get rid of the middleman the the broker you could go straight to the yeah. um insurance company you don't need the person who then is billing you because he's sort of like a waste of space really yeah well, it's fraud. So, it's end-to-end -end fraud. And this is why it's important to have a look at um, the different acts and statutes if you want to go down that route. So if you want to use acts and statutes against these so-called suppliers, then they're all there on the route for you to use. The Gas and Electricity Board Act 1954 stipulates that um, the distributor slash operator has the rights to come to your property uh, to force fit a prepayment meter, right? If there's health and safety concerns at that, supposed health and safety concerns at that property, one might mean, oh, uh, tampering with the meter. That's something that they try to use. So a health and safety concern. So that, that act would allow somebody to come to the property to inspect that property. So inspect uh, the gas meter as an example. Um, so you could use that act against the actual supplier because when, if you do have hassle, and it is rare, but say you were to have hassle and you had somebody with a warrant and they were using the warrant of entry under the 1954 Gas Electricity Board Act, right? Um, it stipulates in that warrant, and I've got an example, a real example on the group that people should be looking at. Um, that warrant stipulates it's the distributor slash operator that has the authority to come to the property now who are these third party interlopers that are coming to these properties they are uh, enforcement agents that's not a distributor operator they are eon scottish powers the so-called suppliers but they are not the true operator they are a metering and billing servicer but they are coming to people's properties with these warrants that are invalid they're not even so signed by a judge they right. are electronic warrants that are not signed by judges. And the reasons for that, again, are detailed within the group. If you want the case law, the case law is on the group for people to read. There's three really good documents that people should print off and have a read about these warrants. If you want to use acts and statutes, but you don't have to, you could simply close your account down with that broker, close it down because you have the right as a customer to close things down. You're not in a contract. Um, pay off that final bill. Let's be reasonable. Pay off the final bill if you want to. You don't have to, but you know, let's say you don't want 
extra hassle of um, a third party debt collector on your back as well, because that is obviously a potential consequence. Pay it off, close the account down, get your own meter in. If you don't want to do a formal written process, but if you want to put that so-called supplier on notice and you want to use apps and statutes, then go for it. Ask them for mm. the evidence, ask them for the disclosure, but they'll not be able to provide it yet. That's when you get to a deadlock. So, uh, that's okay. What, what's what deadlock means? You're in a deadlock position where they won't give you the information that you're asking for. So withhold from paying. It's not like you're refusing. So again, the, but then that can go off on lots of different directions, Richard. As well, this is why yes. it's, it's really hard to like say step one, step two, step three, because I don't know which direction it's going to go off, and you are the ones that need to put up with any potential. Circum like circumstances next steps like uh, yes. you've experienced as well not with electric and gas i don't know what what your experiences was to do with specifically but i know it wants to do with electric and gas but what i'm trying to say is there may be a potential consequence when you're stepping into your sovereignty um when you're choosing not to operate in commerce as an example okay so let me let me um so we still haven't answered the fact that um Electric is already paid for or not? Because how is electricity, that? electricity and gas is already paid for. It's a basic essential resource that sovereign beings, human beings are entitled to, right? The government has to provide us basic essentials. They use, we pay, the people pay the taxes, not the government. The government don't have any money. No. We, the people pay the taxes. The government is meant to distribute that to look after the but I suppose people would ask, and I'm not trying to be difficult here. Oh, I just no, trying no, to, go I, for it. I just, go for it. People like... would ask, where does it say that the government have to provide a essentials expenditure like electric reports? Have a look at the government's expenditure reports of where our tax money is going on. Have a right. look at the UK Power website. UK Power Network website, and have a look at the National Grid website. They they are three. Uh, avenues where I would say go and have a look and do your own due diligence about what it says about what's covered and who pays taxes. Remember, we are the ones that pay the taxes. Remember that Mother Earth, right, provides essentials for us. Mother Gaia, Mother Earth provides essentials. Where does water come from? If you want to go a little bit deeper, Richard, which I don't know if you if uh, viewers will be ready to hear that. And again, there's lots of different um, bits of information on our group for people to hear this about Nikola Tesla. Who was Nikola Tesla? What happened to Nikola Tesla? What did Nikola Tesla discover? Free energy devices. Who has free energy devices? Mm. Well, uh, maybe the government have them and maybe they are pulling it out of the uh, ether and maybe they... Are able maybe to they're supply. harnessed in energy. But they might well. Energy, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't prove that. But yeah. I suppose um, you could go back over a hundred and twenty years um, when we didn't have electricity in our houses, um, and so it wasn't an essential then. I mean, I would argue, as somebody who turns his electricity off at night and in the evening just sits here with a candle, sad bugger that I am, to get away from all the dirty electric uh, waves, that it may not necessarily be essential, though we think of it as an essential um, in the <laughs> lives that we live today. However, however, is it honourable? And here's the question for yeah. sovereign people. And I absolutely accept that you can go, you can say, look, OK, there's acts and statutes, there's legislation, which is a system. Yeah. And then there's natural law, God's law, if you like, which is it's not a system. It is law, L-O-R-E. It's law. And man's made his own system that you can either operate in. And we all think that we have to be in it because it's acts and statutes made by people who, by the way, we, we supposedly pay to do the thing. But they've turned that around. Is it honourable, though? to use something like gas that somebody somewhere has had to get it to your house. It doesn't just magically come out of, I mean, electricity, that, you could argue. That's exactly what's covered in the taxes. Every, that is covered already, prepaid. That's is it honourable to pay the taxes then? When you have, it, have your own meter replaced in your property, mm. right, the operator, the distributor, under the 1954 Gas Electricity Act, stipulates in that warrant that they have the right to come to your property but they don't come to your property because who is the distributor operator it's transco for gas in the uk 
a national grid for electric. Why do they not come to your property to cut you off if you are not paying a broker? Um, People and why? need to turn the questions around. People and why don't need to they? Ask those questions. Why are National Grid not coming out to everyone's what, address? What, but why aren't they coming? Pardon? Why aren't they coming? Because they already have a contract in place with the government. Everything's prepaid through the taxes. It just backs that up every single time. We have over 19,000 members on the group. This is not the only group in the UK. There's lots of other groups that have had their meters replaced. I'm not saying every one of those members has, but a good majority have, and not one has had National Grid or Transco turn up at their house to force fit a prepayment meter or to turn them off. Can you go to National Grid and say, I don't want to deal with these other people. I just want to have your product. Well, that's the funny thing, Richard. If you actually write, which we have had some members that write off, because again, they want to act in honour. So they will say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to give you my meter readings because I've had my own meter put in and I want to act in honour. I'm going to mm. give you, send you my meter readings every, once a month. They will write back to you. They have, they've written back to our members to say, thank you very much, thanks for the meter readings, but you need to sign up with a supplier to give them your meter reading so then they can bill you direct not that we're going to come out and we're going to cut your energy off it's not right any of and that. if but if you ask i mean okay so if we pay i mean i just I, I need to get this sort of solid if we pay for our we've already paid why won't the government tell us that why won't they say why? You've so already paid for they it. They are double dipping us every every opportunity. I know, but we can, pay, but we should be able to hold them. At, the we should be able to hold them to account, complete, surely. Works. They're not going to tell you that. Everything's controlled. It's we've got psychopaths running the world. The well, I, know, so I, know, I don't disagree. With, I don't disagree with you. But, so they're not going to offer that up because once you accept that you have been acting as a slave in a system. Mm. That is a fictitious system, by the way. It's not a real system. It's an illusion, a distortion. Once you step out of that system, you start to question everything in your life, everything from every avenue. And once that bubble has burst, Richard, it, it you sometimes have to go to dark places. It takes you to very dark places because you just think, well, I, I have been asleep the whole of my life. I, I've been under this illusion or under mind control almost. That's what it is. And so it's very if, difficult for people to accept that. Right. If you're out of the system, why do you need to pay the system tax money? Well, you don't have to pay. If you're not in the system, then you don't need to pay tax. That's another... So if you don't pay tax, then you have to pay for your electricity because if well, you're paying for the tax... paid... Again, this is important, Richard, to understand um, the birth certificate fraud. So what's created when the birth certificate is signed by the parents? The parents believe that they um, have created the birth certificate. What you've done is you've registered the birth by signing your child away to the establishment. And then what happens a few days later is the original birth certificate is created. I mean, there's so many YouTube videos on this, so many documentaries. Um, brilliant documentary on uh, the straw man, Nature of the Cage. Um, and it's on our group as well, which I would advise everybody to start. That is the, don't, don't, go, don't go straight to having your meters replaced. Start at the beginning. Understand the birth certificate fraud. What happens when your parents sign you away to the establishments? That's why they are called parents. They rent that child for the rest of their lives. They've signed the child away, the fictitious entity, the name on the uh, birth Unless they claim it. They signed them away, and what happens at that point, a corporation is set up in that legal fiction. That is exchanged on the stock exchange. That is worth millions, billions by the time you're 50. So people need to do that work first to understand, well, what, how are people using our birth certificate and creating all these millions of pounds? So for me, it's like that's just another avenue to look at it from of where we've been scammed. Why don't we have access to these millions from our birth certificate fund? The trust fund yeah, that well, is set I, up by the it, establishment it, in our name. We don't have access. Yes. We don't have access I, to it. I mean, I, and, and that's a whole new, that's a different show. Yeah, I mean, 
But it, I mean, I, I guess what you're saying is it all goes back to the fraudulent practices in which they have made money from. Now, we didn't set up this trust fund. No. But um, so because we didn't set it up, why should we have access to it? I know they're using our name, but we're not. To, but but we are paying tax. So I just come back to this this one point. If you're sovereign and you decide I don't need to pay taxes because I'm not in your system, I'm not paying for your system. But at the same time, you can't then argue, surely, that, well, electricity is already paid for through the taxes, which I'm not part of, so therefore I'm going to have it for free. Well, you can now, because everything that you buy, when you buy food, you're taxed on it. Everything is taxed. When you buy diesel, petrol, it's taxed. When you buy right. food, it's taxed. Everything is in Well, I know that. Yeah, no. It's covered. It's just, it's a whole whirlwind, and it's... It is hard for people to accept because yes. you don't, nobody wants to say, oh, yeah, I've been scammed my whole life and been taken control of and been under this mind control. Nobody wants to admit that. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's really, it's again, it's about doing, doing your work, a 360 event. It's like going down all these different paths and coming to a decision of where do I want to go from this point do i want to stay in the matrix where i have all these programs and distortions or do i want to step out and really find my true self and worth and who i really am when we go through these ascensions we are just remembering it's nothing new we are remembering the original template who we are and 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 that's what it is and we can we can go around and around all day in circles but um, I guess it's it's having that choice. There's choices. People need to make the decisions, and we need to have the choices to do that. We need to remove victimhood as well, because that's something that that's another distortion. Right. Um, people love so to So how live, do, live how in. do uh, let's say you go down this path and you say I'm not going to be part of the, the the system, which is you know quite laudable, and and who wants to be yeah. part of a system that's in? I'm not. See, I'm not. I'm only pushing back on some of the questions but i'm not um i'm not saying anybody should be uh paying for anything i'm not arguing that the the that we we acquiesce to the current system because we can see the current system is a complete and utter uh fraud and not only that it's uh ha ha harming people which uh the first rule is do no harm and and yet it is full of harm but let's say that you you take yourself out of the system how do you Here's the question that I think people will be thinking. I don't want, if I come out of that system, I completely agree with it, I get all of that, I understand the, the Keskave Trust and all of that, not that yeah. I can pronounce it terribly well, but you, people can come to that decision and they do all their due diligence and their homework and they, and they go, yes. Yeah. But what I don't want is some big bugger coming along, banging on my door with yeah. fake bits of paper and all of that. I don't want the hassle. I want this. I'm being honourable. I want the rest of the world to be honourable. How many... Can people do this, swap their metres, do it all properly and, and, and you know, tell them I'm just not going to have the metre, thank you very much, I've paid yeah. the bill off to here, blah, blah. Yeah. And then can they walk away, hold their head up high and not be hassled? And if they are, how do they... How do they deal this. with that? It's, yes. it's, it's in a way that's not detrimental it's, to them. I guess it depends what you class as hassle and harassment. Well, nobody turning up at all I mean, and having that, a nice, that, quiet I mean, life. I, mean, and, I would and... say, if you're concerned about that, then mm. I would definitely recommend going down the formal written approach because then you've got actual factual evidence. And when you've done that, do they leave you alone? Um, not necessarily, no. No, so we've got members that go down. But this is, this is don't forget, the only card that they've got left to play is, is to send letters to the address, so automated letters, because that generates responses, because people start to yes. be curious and they find that as harassment. Whereas for me, they're just bits of paper that belong in the bin, right? Yes. Um, Sending people out to the property, like you suggested, to read your meter or to do initial investigation, that's something that they do do because that is the only card that they've got left to play to try to entice you back into the system to install some fear. And it does mm. work with some people. They can't bear somebody coming to the property. No, I, but I, if I can... you know who you are, Richard, and yes. you... You know that you are a sovereign being of light and you are stood in your light of sovereignty. Everything else bounces back off your light because you know who you are. So 
for me, I'll give a really good example. Last year, I had two debt collectors who were impersonating Bailey to turn up at my property. They were gone within two minutes because I know who I am and I know how to deal with these third-party interlopers. They they knew that they weren't going to get anywhere. That's not about using threatening like violence or threats or we don't want to drop the frequency. We want to we want to educate people, um, and and this is what the group is about. It's about education. Uh, knowing who you are, knowing who these third parties are and what they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. And I'm, I am telling you now, in the last two years, we have seen the corruption for, ed, for face value of what it is. I mean, some of the members that have experienced certain situations with these third party interlopers with, with bringing warrants that are invalid for many, many reasons. Um, but also they are using a document that's fraudulent um, they are using that at a visit under false pretenses. So, you know, like a, a locksmith maybe would attend with somebody with a warrant of entry. That third party locksmith has a responsibility as a third party to check that the document is valid. You could actually hold that third party in their personal capacity for perjury, which is mm. covered on, on, on for, under the, I think it's, 1911 at section 12 it's on our group but the actual act you could you could hold them for perjury because they are there under false pretenses with fake fraudulent documentation at the property trying to pick your locks like it's mad but again this is why it's so vast that you need to understand every avenue and be prepared and you, there's no magic red pill to solve anything when you know in this matrix system unfortunately so Whichever route you choose, I cannot say to you, right, you're not going to have any hassle now, 100%. Don't work like that, unfortunately. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Um, but it depends so, what you class as hassle. I, do, I didn't class that little event as harassment or hassle. I really enjoyed it um, because it really... A lot of, felt- yeah, I mean, you, 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 I, I, can, I can see that. You're a feisty lady, and, and I can see that you probably... Would, but uh, a lot of people can't, and you do see people being repossessed and um, they're being fined. Not in fined. an electric and I, gas situation. There's no repossession. I mean, they don't have that power to take your house. No, but I'm... They don't I'm, have I'm, any powers to Yes, bro- I'm broadening it out to all sorts of, uh, of yeah. hasslement that people do see. <laughs> however, however, yeah. um, I do think that it is right and laudable to challenge this situation because it is as you so eloquently described it is fraudulent and they are using fake documents and the more people who are brave enough to do this ought to do it because eventually it will crumble that i do honestly believe that it's already those well well, my reality my reality my universe the system has crumbled and we are just seeing the after effects right that's my reality my opinion Right, again, in other people's it universe. What timeline you are on. Yes, okay. So in other people's universe, it might not. But what we want to get to the point where the enforcement agents and uh, the bailiffs co, there's no point in us even existing anymore because everybody knows. They know that we are third party interlopers and we can't do anything. And that the courts have to then realise their game is up. They can't do these bulk hearings. Mm-hmm. They can't do these fake. Uh, writs or these um, yeah. pronouncements where nobody's actually present to hear whether it happened or not and all of that. So we are moving to that stage, albeit incrementally, it seems to me, so that people can stand in their power and and be... But so what I see is, and, and I know you, you don't want to talk about fight and flight, but I see at the moment there are those who are prepared to do this and quite rightly so, I think they should, because it is corrupt, and then it will get easier for other people who will go. Well, I, I you know, it's all paid for. I don't. Want, I, I, why am I being whatever? And and they won't get the hassle. Mm-hmm. So you, it's kind of like you do need those brave souls initially who've it, who've got the guts down in them. A lot, Richard. When we talk, when we look at the data, because we we've, we've accumulated data in the last two years of, of people having their meters replaced and, and the situations that people have found themselves, which is rare. But the people that have had hassle that rate it, it peaked in the summer last year like people were having a lot of hassle from third-party interlopers and force fit prepayment meters and then it hit the media 
and you know when it's hit the media uh, that means business so it hit the media the, the, the government updated certain guidelines for the brokers to abide by specifically for vulnerable households um so they increased um the penalties that these brokers suppliers would face if they acted unreasonable a, a vulnerable household so say if you were going to do like you said if it, like this is the best situation if you didn't want hassle and you're still frightened and st st you're still operating in fear you would probably the best approach for you to take going down this route would be to do the formal written approach to put the supplier on notice to ask them for the evidence for the full disclosure it right but what you would also do within that correspondence which i i would definitely recommend would be you'd revoke you send them an implied like revoke of access to the property up front so you've got it documented that you've revoked the access which means that you've basically um sent them formal correspondence um to warn them that they are not authorized to come to the property right to give you hassle you would uh, maybe put a block on your personal data under gdpr so you tell them that look you have my personal details under general data protection regulation 2018 i do not consent for you to hand my information out to any third parties i.e a locksmith i.e debt collector etc right so you give them that you would send them a vulnerability notice as well to tell them that the household is vulnerable because you have your elderly uh, relative living with you or you have children under the age of 16 which a lot of members do so you'd be classed as vulnerable they're not allowed to send third party interlopers out to vulnerable households so you would you would give them all this information up front so what would that do is hopefully it would mitigate any next steps if you wanted to go down that route if you were still fearful of certain events that should mitigate but also what you do is you increase security at the property so you put some video ring doorbells up or cctv you would put some trespass notices up you would protect your front door you maybe put a gate up uh, you know so your front door is not accessible so there's all these things and this is why i hold monthly group sessions richard for those that need a little bit more information they can't necessarily navigate through the telegram group right because a lot of people are not tech savvy they might want to book on one of the group sessions and yes i asked for a donation for my time because i've got to feed my children as well and i've given up a career to do this so i asked for a little donation uh, for my time and energy um, to help give you a confidence boost and to talk through different approaches to take depending on your circumstances. So we discuss like different options maybe that have worked in the last couple of years. So do that. So there's lots of things where the group is, is full of research, it's full of information and you can book on a group session if you want to or say you've had hassle with a third, third party you can book on the aftercare session as well. So I go through there and I give apps and statues if you want to go down that route. I give them on that to use like the Fraud Act, the Protection from Harassment Act, the Perjury Act, all these different apps that you can use um, to stand within your sovereignty if you have a third party interloper at the property, as an example. So. Um, there's no magic pill to solve everything, but there's lots of information that you can use um, if you want to, and if you decide to go down that route, or you can quite ha happily step back in the matrix and pay your bills. <laughs> yes, I suppose at the options. end of the day, you've got, yes, at the end of the day, I guess you, you can, I mean, obviously if it's gone to third party interlopers, they do like to sort of whack up the, the prices oh, too God, much yeah. to... Uh, and, 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 and I'm seeing that myself. Um, you're going to Ireland. Tell me about that. Oh, we've, we've had a lot, um, a lot of messages and correspondence from people in Ireland that, that have uh, heard about the group and they're like, look, it's, it's national grid don't operate in Ireland. They have their equivalent and it's exactly the same that's happening in Ireland with the meters. So we've ummed and awed about it a long time because it's a long way there's a lot of travel you know with things and the engineers have agreed that look they're going to organize a date go over to ireland and they're going to start replacing meters in ireland and that's what's going to happen in the next few months when we've got that organized with the with the engineers um it's spreading worldwide i mean we've had we've had calls 
all sorts, like all sorts of different people from different backgrounds, but different locations and countries as well. For like, because I always start them in the same. If you've got a birth certificate, then the fraud is there. So start with that aspect and then start to look at everything, um, because the blueprint. Richard, it, it doesn't matter where you live. The blueprint is the same in wherever you live, whether it's in America, Canada, whatever, Germany, whatever, Spain, it's the same blueprint that's operated. The corruption is, is the same wherever you go. It's worldwide. It's not just UK, let's be honest. Um, and set your own group up. We've had lots of people in here and I've said, look, use the information on the group and set your own free energy nationwide group up and start to build your own information because I can't do everything, you know, like no, of course, start no. one yourself and then use the information that's on our group and, and create one for your own. And we started to see little groups that have started to build up. And the, like you said, the more of us that work on this, the more of us um, that, that stand together, the system is eventually going to crumble. Um, or crumbled, depending on what timeline you are on, really. It's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so so do the uh, Irish uh, grid work on the same principle then that you that they have brokers and, and they all They have all brokers, that, yeah. yeah, exactly the same. Metering, billing services. Um, yeah. It, it's, we did... Um, We've got a good interview with um, Alan from Circle of White Light. Really. Oh yes. So that yeah, so that's really good. And Alan's done his own digging as well, where he's actually took it upon himself to write direct to um, I, I can't uh, place their name uh, currently, but the equivalent to National Grid in Ireland. So he's already started that, and he's actually found um, in the south of Ireland um, a group that started um, to build as like a, a brokerage, like for the people. So we, we, we did think about it in the UK to do this. But I mean, for me, I'm not, I don't think there's a need to do it, but it's open for someone to take on. But there's nothing to stop us, the people, from creating um, a credit broker for the people as such. So you tell your supplier that you're closing the account because you're going to go with this supplier, the people's supplier, we could call it. Mm. Um, there's ideas and talks about that, of course, the national grid wouldn't recognize that the government wouldn't recognize it um but it's an idea it's an option isn't it to say well i'm not going to go with eon or scottish power i'm going to go with the people um brokerage limited well i think at some point uh, sooner or later the free energy um idea is going to happen you know somebody somewhere will have cracked the old free energy and we'll have these units and and unfortunately the national grid will probably be obsolete because it'll be an old-fashioned way of doing it i dare say um in you know so much science now and so many different um things that have been hidden let's say are slowly coming back on stream which is which is great yeah. what have you investigated or how does it impact people who've got solar panels on their roofs who sell back some of the electricity they generate to the national grid, does that bypass the brokers who are supplying it? So if you say, I've got a meter, I'm going to change the meter, I no longer need you, uh, broker over there, but yeah. I still want to be able to sell back some of the stuff that I'm not using from the solar panels. Yeah. It's no, we've had members that have got solar panels. It's not interfered with what they're doing about selling it back either. Sometimes when you've got does solar it panels, bypass the broker? Meter. They might have a separate meter that deals with that. So it, yeah. again, it's um, quite vast. No situation is the same with right. solar panels. It depends what the setup is, but the engineers are highly experienced with that, so they can advise when you book in. They can advise. Does it advise bypass the broker then? Does it go straight to the grid? Say that again. Richard. When you when you're supplying the grid with your own electricity and you're selling it, does that go to the grid directly, I'm or not do sure. you go? I mean, for me, it's recirculated energy. I mean, power station. I've worked on power stations. Power stations. Do they create energy, or is it just circulated? Is it just an illusion to keep the lie alive? There's those questions that people need to ask. But again, I don't want to be labelled as a conspiracy. Tin no, no. I, no all I, I was just wondering if, if, if you've got, say, from, let's call it, um, I don't know, 
red box electricity company and you get your domestic stuff from them but you've got solar panels on the roof and you're selling back does it go through red box broker or does it go straight to the grid and well, then nothing the... goes through the broker that that's i think that's the that's the illusion no energy is is no i don't mean i mean the billing really i suppose the... i don't i don't believe i don't actually know because i've never had right. solar panels myself i've never had no solar... oh well if anybody knows then that would be quite interesting because i know a lot of people do that sort of they sell back to the grid but whether it just reduces their their, their overall their, billage it's their different. overall billage what I don't i've know. had to say to some people that have got solar panels is at some point you need to make a decision some depending on the circumstance sometimes you can't have it both ways you can't have your solar panels and, and make money on it and sell it back to the grid and no well that's that's what it. was go, that was what was going through my mind yeah you, know. you can't it's it's part of it both ways because it might mess the setup it's a lot of people we have members as well that might just want their electric done but Oh, oh, this is a good example. They've got um, a broker that does their internet, you know, the Wi-Fi broadband, their gas and electric, but they want to change the meters. So they're in a bit of an issue there because you yeah. can't close the account down because then you're not going to have any broadband. So, I mean, a simple way to solve that situation would be to close the account down for all of them just to pick up the supply with a broker specifically for your broadband and not with the gas and electric. Because, you, again, you can't have it both ways, can you? you can't, um, no, you, no. Yeah. And and in many ways, that's how things are being sold, isn't it? That you get all these utilities from one supplier, which makes yeah. it harder then to to kick back. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, well, your gas has gone up, but your electric's cheaper. So, you know, you better stay with us. Yeah, but I use yeah. more gas or whatever. I don't use any gas at all. Um, brilliant. Well, I think we've answered a number of the, the queries and questions. Um and I know you're you're moving into other areas as well in the group. Lots of discussions going on. Um, but the Telegram group is Free Energy Nationwide, and they can do a search. But I'll put a link back in the description. Um, and there's tons. I mean, I, I always find Telegram groups difficult because you're constantly scrolling and trying to find the references. So I, I'm not very good on it. But if you use it on a computer, is it easier to sort of find older material or is it I still just... I normally use it on my phone. I mean, you know what I might do on one of these community call sessions? We do community calls now on a Thursday using the Telegram group video, but I might do a session because I think everybody has the same issues that are not very tech savvy with Telegram Yeah. Um, and actually share my screen and, and navigate people through Telegram because it, it, once you know how, it's really easy. So you don't have to scroll through all the chat. The chat is the chat for people to sh chat. It's yeah. pinned messages, so there's a little icon, a little pin, and if you press that icon on our group, that claps as a whole load of information where you can just scroll through the information so you don't have to scroll through the chat. But what I might oh, do is do a little session on how to navigate and find the file section, find the link section, yeah. the video section. Oh, that's re that is really useful because I, I'm, I'm completely rubbish at all of that, and you're yeah. going... They said it was on here somewhere. And yeah, you're going, and people, and, and... people get a little bit disheartened because they're not necessarily tech savvy. So I do understand yeah. that. We're coming from yeah. lots of different directions. And that's why exactly. we built the group in the first place because we needed like a document store and it's uncensored. We do have lots of bots. So if I, I don't message anyone direct and... So that we have bots that are impersonating us, the group. Well, the again, that's definitely worth saying because I d did start a Telegram group and, and then I got so many bots from people and people were saying they were getting bots from me, yeah. you know, saying hello. And it's like, well, that's not me. Sorry, it's, yeah, it's not me. It's, I it's don't... a nuisance, but, I mean, it's, it's whether you use social media, you get censored and deleted. So we chose Telegram because it was something different, alternative. Yeah. Um, it's not censored. We can hold documents on there. We can do videos, live streams. For us, it just made sense for us. So we don't have a website, Richard. We're not a business. Like, that's no. what I need to reiterate. We are not a business. We're just sharing ideas and experiences. And nobody's holding anybody to anything. You don't have to do anything that you do not want to do. Um, it's just showing you some different alternative options, which I guess the last four years, there's so much alternative media or news information out there for people to explore. And the, the time is now. Uh, yes. And it's showing in what's happened in the last four years. So whether you're oh, ready absolutely. to hear it yet or not, 
is still your decision and don't be rushed into anything. There's always no. an option. If, if things go down a different path, there's always an option to claw back as well. So don't ever think that, oh, I've had my meters replaced and I can't cope with hassle. You can always have the old meters put back in if you didn't want to continue. So there's, there's many, many different options. You're never stuck um, at any point with this. I just wanted to reiterate that because some people think that it's life or death, and that's it's it. Like, yes. Not. I, I, yeah, I mean, there's so many things in life, isn't there, that we think that that is rock solid. You can't possibly do that. And if you do that, then, you, you know, you're going to get your throat slit. Yeah. And it's uh, that's not the case at all. No, not at all. We've got There's we've always got a choices. remedy for something. But, yeah. Brilliant. Kale, it's been no lovely problem. to catch Thanks up with you. Limited. And um, uh, good luck with everything you do. Good luck in Ireland. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. and, and all the other stuff. So, as I say, the uh, link will be in the description, Free Energy Nationwide. Do check that out and uh, do your uh, research, of course. Stand in your power, and I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. Um, and in the meantime, of course, I'll be back with more monologues and more interviews, wonderful interviews. And so there we are from uh, lovely Kales and myself. Till next time, goodbye.